So lately I have been showing you a number of different ways of how to save battery life on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. However, sometimes no matter what we do, there is always going to be some type of issue, whether it is a bug within the Android operating system, whether it is a third-party application or game. There are a number of different things that can cause battery drain and today I want to show you how to monitor and figure out what is causing the battery drain on your Galaxy Note 9. So we're going to do this with the application Better Battery Stats. You can buy this on the Play Store or there is a free version to download on the XDA forums. Both versions will be linked in the full tutorial on my website, which I will have linked in the video description for those of you who are watching this on YouTube. There are a couple of different steps depending on which version you download, but again, I will have those different steps indicated in the full tutorial on my website, so be sure to read that full tutorial because we're going to be going into ADB so we're going to need to have USB debugging mode enabled on the phone and we're going to need to have ADB and fastboot tools installed on our device again if you're unfamiliar with how to do that read through the full tutorial on my website as I will walk you through all of this entire process step by step. So I found better battery stats to be very very useful so I bought it on the Play Store that's what this version is. Whenever we open up the application if you do not have root access then you're gonna be asked to enter some ADB commands. If you do have root access then you can skip this part entirely but if you do not, then we have this alternate option. So again, make sure you have USB debugging mode installed. Make sure you have ADB and Fastboot tools installed on your computer. And make sure you have granted USB debugging mode access from the PC to the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 so that we can enter the following commands. So once we have our Samsung Galaxy Note 9 connected to the PC with a USB cable, we're going to open up a command prompt in the same folder as our ADB and Fastboot tools are located in. And we can go ahead and type in the ADB devices command just to make sure that our device is listed there. If it is not, then we have not set up this stuff correctly. It's either a USB issue or you haven't accepted USB debugging mode access or something in between. Once that's done though, we're going to type out the command ADB space shell and press enter. And just like the commands that were listed on the Better Battery Stats application, we're going to type those in. I'm simply going to copy and paste this to make this quicker. So it's PM space grant space com dot asksven dot better battery stats space android dot permission dot and then battery underscore stats in capital letters once you have typed or copy that you, again this will be on the website so you can copy and paste it if you want once we have all that ready we're just going to press enter on the keyboard we're going to do the second command which is the same beginning but we're going to do uppercase D-U-M-P and the third and final command 
is going to be uppercase package underscore usage underscore stats and then press enter. Now if you had downloaded this application from XDA, the free version, instead of just com.asksven.betterbatterystats, there's going to be a .xda edition or something similar to the end of that. Again, I'm going to have this detailed in the step-by-step -step tutorial on my website. So if you're confused about this process, be sure to refer to my website. All right, now as I mentioned, I had to do that demo on a different phone because I have already done those ADB commands on my Galaxy Note 9. This has also given us given me time to collect some data with better battery stats on the Galaxy Note 9 so I can show you some things to look out for. Now once you have entered those commands you can force close the application and then open it back up and then you're going to see an application that looks like this except there's not going to be any data there because you have just granted that type of permission so all of this data is not going to be collected yet so you're going to need to give it time I suggest you go ahead and charge up your phone to 100 percent most likely that night so that the next day when you unplug it then it will start to collect all this data and you'll have a reference point of unplug. So once we have collected some data we can see that the this Galaxy Note 9 has been running on the bat on a battery for a day and 19 hours and 42 minutes. Of that time a day and 17 hours has been in deep sleep mode. Now if you just keep a phone on the desk and you don't use it that's great 95% deep sleep mode is fantastic I use this phone just for tutorials I'm not using this as a day as a daily driver so that's good that will be different for you so you might notice that your awake screen off time might be higher than 2.7% now that means that there are applications that are waking up your device and preventing it from going into deep sleep mode. That is a big sign of what is causing your battery drain. Now if you're just using your phone a lot and you're playing games on it and you're texting, you're sending messages on Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, and you're really using your phone you should expect the battery life on your Galaxy Note 9 to go down relatively fast because you're really using it. But if you're using your phone in a casual way or just a average way, then you should expect to get maybe four, five, sometimes even six hours of screen on time. Again, depending on what you do with your device, and what you have installed. So to find out, so say this awake screen off time was more like 27% instead of 2.7%. Now we need to find out why. So we're going to tap on this summary drop down option up here at the top. We get a number of options here. If you wanted to, you could go into kernel wake locks and see if there are any major wake locks that are being caused by the kernel. Now, the kernel is part of the Android operating system. If you're using a custom ROM, maybe that kernel is not optimized properly. If you are using Samsung and their original firmware, then you might need to do a factory reset because there could be something wrong with the kernel. Usually you're not going to see that many uh, major kernel wake locks on this page. If you do, then you need to Google that. Like if the WLAN TXFL wake kernel wake lock was 
you know, 30, 40, 50 percent, then you would want to Google that, and that might tell you a little bit more about what is going on. Usually, the kernel wake lock is not important. However, a couple of places that are important are the partial wake locks. Now, the partial wake locks are more go are, are going to be more about applications you have installed on your device from the Play Store or from a third-party application store. Now, it's not going to just say, you know, Fortnite right here. It's going to have a special command like Google underscore C2DM or and a big partial wake lock issue that used to plague Android a lot in the past is the NLP collector wake lock. That used to be big, and a lot of people had issues with that. Some of them got rid of it by dis uh, disabling location services or location history. But this is a good place to look to see if there are any big major wake locks if you see one of these taking up again like 20 30 40 percent then that's a big issue currently for me I'm having a better an idle battery life issue on the Mi Mix 3 and the culprit was not discovered in the kernel wake lock or the partial wake lock it was actually found in the alarms section now in there I noticed that the com.google.android.gms and um, Xiaomi's the Xiaomi services framework were keeping the device awake way longer than it should. Now 6.4 per hour isn't that bad because it's just turning it on instantly and turning it right back on turning it on instantly and turning it right back on. Even though these are big percentages, it's not causing that big of an issue whenever it's 6.4 an hour or 8.1 an hour. Now if this service was waking up your device 60 or 70 or 80 times per hour, like I'm having issues with one, my Mi Mix 3, then that's going to cause an issue and then you're going to need to take this com.google.android.gms combine and then do a Google search with better battery stats or just alarms and see if you can find a answer. There's not going to be one answer for everybody. Hate to say it. And the same with the com.sec spp.push which whenever I did a quick Google search on that I found that was the Samsung push service so there could be a application that is using the Samsung push service a lot this could be the game launcher this could be the Galaxy Apps Store. It could be something that is causing a lot of alarms on this device since this one is right up here at the top. So again, I just suggest that you go through here once you have collected a lot of data from letting the Better Battery Stats application have permission that it needs whether it's via root or ADB then go through these kernel wake locks partial wake locks alarms we can look at our network and we can find out if a certain application is using a lot of of our network so you know we can see Samsung pay has used 107 megabytes in the last day and 19 hours. Now if this was, you know, eight gigabytes, that's definitely an issue, and I would definitely want to uninstall and reinstall Samsung Pay 
or re or clear the app cache and data just to see if we can fix that issue. That's an, I mean, having an application like that downloading data in the background, especially in the gigabyte range, can drain a lot of your battery life. This is just something that you're going to have to look at and analyze from CPU states just to see what gigahertz your phone is being used at. We have our processes. And lastly, we have our sensors. Now these last two things, the sensors, processes, CPU states really aren't going to be very useful for analyzing Galaxy Note 9 battery drain. But the other things, including the network, Again, if we see something in the in the gigabyte range that we know should not be downloading gigabytes of data, then that will f help us find out which actual application we're having issues with. But again, in my personal experience, it's the partial wake locks section and the alarms section that are really telling when it comes to finding out the overall battery drain of our device. And again, again, I cannot stress, this is going to be different for everybody. If you're sitting here using Facebook four or five hours a day, then of course it's going to be up here higher in the alarms and the partial weight clocks and the network section. That's just how it's going to be. That doesn't mean that that application is optimized poorly. Facebook technically is optimized poorly, but you know it's doing a lot of stuff in the background. So if you're using a simple alarm application or a simple game, and you see that really high up here in the alarms, or the partial wake locks section, then that's going to tell you that there's something wrong with either that install of that application or game, maybe there's some corrupt data and you need to wipe the cache for that application, or you may just need to uninstall it entirely because the application or game is just coded and optimized very poorly. I mean, that's really all there is to it. So I know this was a long video, there's a lot of steps involved to analyzing the Galaxy Note 9 battery drain. I know battery life is a very important feature that, or issue, that's why I've been doing a lot of videos and tutorials lately to help you save as much battery life as possible. So now I wanted to end it by helping you analyze what is actually draining the battery life of your device.